So as many of you already know, I am a Grace Company ambassador, but I've also been selected to be on their new advisory board to test out a new upgraded version of their cutie frame that they're calling the cutie breeze. So it came in the mail. I'm super excited. We're going to unbox it, get it assembled, see how long it takes. The previous version of the cutie frame, I think they said had about 26 steps to assemble. And this one has about 16. So it is less assembly. It's supposed to go together faster. Let's check it out. So the way that the Grace Company packages their machines and their frames, these boxes you can lay flat and then there are staples all along the edges. You just pull out these staples and then the top lifts off. It makes it really convenient for heavy items. So you don't have to try and lift like a machine out of a box through the top. So it's real easy. You could just take a screwdriver, pop it in behind, and then like pull the staple out. They're pretty flexible, even though they're quite large. All right, 16 staples out. Let's open it up. So this box is a bit longer compared to the other cutie box, but it's also like shorter in this direction. And I heard the main reason for that is the rails of this version are a solid piece where with the cutie, it was two shorter rails that you had to connect together. So we have our instruction manual. And these handy laminated cards that has a checklist for when you're starting a new project. That's really nice. And just some like quick start stuff. If you take your frame apart to store it while you're not using it, keep this with it so it'll help you remember how to put everything back together. I'm gonna set that aside. Take out our packaging. Now, there is quite a bit of styrofoam, which I'm not a huge fan of. I get it because, you know, this is expensive equipment. They need to keep it safe. And luckily, I have a styrofoam recycling service that happens to be coming tomorrow to pick up. If you don't have a styrofoam recycling service uh, that picks up, you can check some local grocery stores will have events where you can bring in clean styrofoam. All right, those are the handles. That's another change between the original Cutie and the Cutie Breeze is the style of handles. With the Cutie, it was two handles underneath at the base of the carriage that you would use. This comes up and over the machine. So that I'm really looking forward to. I'm just going to get everything out of the box and then we will go over all of the parts and pieces. All right, assembly instructions. Let's check all of our pieces. Okay, included parts and tools. So here's one rail. It has the brackets pre-installed. That's different from the previous model. Do not worry, these are not my fabric scissors. And here is the second rail. 
also have two tracks. And this is nice because this is a solid piece where the old model, it was split in half and then you would connect them together and insert the plastic here. This is already done. That's really nice because that was actually a, a little bit more of a challenging step that I had with the last one. It also has this rubber on the bottom. This is the part that'll actually sit on your table. So that will keep it from sliding and it'll keep it from scratching if you're putting it on like your dining room table. We have two rail holders, one left, one right. The clips go on the outside of the frame. So they will, oh, and that's upside down. So they'll go like that. Oh, it says on there, left side, right side. That is handy. Hmm. Those, oh, these are the side walls. These are the rail holders. They've already got the clips on them. This is what holds your fabric in place. They look pretty identical, except this one has a thumb screw on it. So we'll set those aside. And it looks like the right side is the one with a thumb screw. This is the bottom carriage. It has side A, side B. B, and there's a little addendum that was in the booklet that says that this is the front side unless you're using a Cunic 19. So I'll actually be, when I'm using it, using my 16X Elite on it um, or my Juki domestic machine. I'm going to set it up today with the Juki because that's easier. So this, I'm going to do that upside down so it doesn't roll away. That is the bottom carriage. This is the top carriage. So this is what your machine, if you're using a domestic, will actually sit on. Set that there. We have two handles. And then this is really cool. This sits between the handles to keep them stationary but it has a built-in bobbin holder. And then there's little magnets here, so you can hold pins. And then there's little slits that they designed to hold your, probably smaller than this scissors, like your little snips can fit in there. Which honestly, like I'd love to have this for my Cunique, because that is really handy to have all right front and center. This insert is for L-class bobbins. And then there is an additional insert in the box, I believe, for M-Class. Okay. Clamps. There are two already on the front. There are two back clamps in here. Oh, wait, no. So the side clamps are already installed. It says there's three. Oh, there are three. Okay. I thought there were four for a second. These are the back clamps. And then this came with some mini clips, which is really cool. That'll just help you wrangle your fabric. So there are three mini clips in here. Here's the M-Class bobbin insert. These are clamps for when you're using your domestic machine. And here we have an Allen wrench, release knobs, some screws, and rubber bumpers. Okay. And then this is a zip tie and a little plastic piece that you can stick to your carriage or your machine so you can zip tie all your cords in place. And then these are one of the big changes from the original Cutie to the new. These are coils that go on the back clamps. It goes like that. So you don't have to roll up your fabric and use those bungee cords that it used to have. You can just roll it up and stick it in here. And this will always be at the top of the machine because there was issues where you could like accidentally sew in the elastic straps from the old one into your quilt. Happened quite a bit. So this is a huge improvement that I'm really happy about. So there's three of those to go with three back lamps. And then there's supposed to be a carriage stop clip. Um, but I have seen from others in the advisory group that it was missing. So it looks like mine is missing as well. Um, that is something that Grace is working on. 
So that's the actual frame. It also came with this, which is really cool. It is actually, oh, there's thread in here too. So the couple spools of thread and even two bobbins in a really nice gray color. I will definitely use that. And then a test panel or a practice panel, I guess. So it's just a fun printed panel, something for you to use for your first project to practice on. Very nice addition, if you ask me. There's also a booklet that goes along with it. A guide for starting with your new frame, refining your skills, and exploring your creativity with a practice quilt panel. Oh, that's really nice. So it has lots of tips and tricks and suggestions on how to quilt the panel. Even sandwiching your batting and your backing. Nice. That's going to be fun to play with. All right, on to the assembly. Probably get some of this out of the way until we need it. So we need both tracks, sidewalls, and the thread rubber bumper. So these can go, these can go, right? Oh, the tracks, not the rails. Okay, so we need both of the tracks and the sidewalls. I will put the rails aside. Just set them down here. And I'll move the carriage out of the way. Don't move the handles yet. Oh, I need these guys. Rubber bumper. So on the tracks, the left side has like a threaded hole in it. And that is where you will put these. Oh, that rubber grip on the underside really, really grips. Can't even slide these. Align the holes in the end of the tracks with the sidewall thumb screw. The Breeze logo faces outward on the walls. So here it says cutie, it's embossed. And then here it says Breeze. The Breeze is on the outside. And then there are these two pre-installed thumb screws on either side. And that is what screws into the end of the tracks. For reference, my table is 60 inches wide. This frame is 51, I want to say. I don't have my measuring tape. Oh, let's measure with the table. It is, the frame itself is like 51 and a quarter, and then the thumb screws stick out from there. So keep that in mind when you are figuring out which table you're going to put it on. All right, that's task one. And then aligning the tracks with the bottom carriage. All right, bottom carriage, the little tabbies face forward. The instructions themselves are printed with these facing the rear, which is why they included the addendum. So if you're using anything other than a Cunic 19, these should face the front. Move the carriage as far left as possible. Oh, that's nice, the bumper. Then as far right as possible. Until you're confident the carriage moves smoothly and evenly. It is pretty smooth to me. So you move it all the way over and then you tighten the thumb screws really tight. If it's off a little, you can loosen the thumb screws and make adjustments. Then move it over this way and do the same thing. All right, task two complete. Part two. It's for when you're using your domestic machine. So for today, I'm just assembling the frame, um, but I have a project coming up where I want to move my Cunique onto this frame along with the automation package to quilt a quilt 
that is too large for my eight foot frame. This is a hoop style frame, so you are not limited to the size. You just move the quilt piece by piece or you section by section and quilt as much as you need. For now, I don't have any lower encoders to install. So now we need our top plate, the handles, the handle brackets, and then screws. Into the top plate and the handles. So the top plate you can see has this wider part. This is the back of the plate, but that's where we're going to attach the handles. And it says take one of the handles, so it doesn't matter which is which, and insert it so that the two screws, so there's two screws right there, and they align with two holes in the plate. And it is the M4 by 30 millimeter. I'm gonna need the Allen wrench for that. Seriously. Okay, we're gonna flip this around. And then we need this guy. So you align it with the front set of holes. We need these screws. And these nuts. That's handy. So the nut slides in to a little channel. All right, one side. Nice and sturdy. Okay. Got that installed. And then it already has the L-Class bobbin insert, which I'm going to put my Juki on, which has L-Class bobbins. So we'll leave that there for now. So put this on top of the lower carriage. So the lower carriage is what moves left to right. Then the top carriage is the back and forth. So we need the clamps. And for these, you just open it up. And then it creates like a little notch at the bottom. And you slide that from the inside out with the blue bumper 
facing in, because that is what will go against your machine. All right, so we're going to put my Juki on there. It's a Juki TL2010Q. I don't have it set up. I don't have it set up to actually quilt. I'm just going to put the machine on. I still have my walking foot on there. This might be easier to come in from the back. You want it about center. And then you just push the little clamp towards the machine. So it just bump it up. Press that down and it locks it in place. Nice. So when you're using your frame, this is how you will be standing or sitting, but you'll guide it using these handles from the front, or you can do it from the back. If you have a pantograph down on the table with a laser, you can do that as well. The old style had the handles down below. So you were kind of like flying blind because it was underneath the quilt. You get used to it after a while, but this I feel is just a little more intuitive, natural. I like this a lot. All right, so we have our machine installed. One tip I will give you, and I saw this on something from the old frame. If you're using your domestic machine and you also use that same machine to piece with, so it'll kind of be hopping back and forth from on the frame and off the frame, you don't need to undo all four of the clamps. Just undo two of them on the same side. You could then remove your machine. And when you go to reinstall your machine, these two are still in the same place. So you can just butt the machine up against them and move these two in place. Makes it a lot easier for the in and out. My table is clearly not level, but that's okay for today. Now on to task five, we're putting in the rail holders. So that's these pieces right here. So for each rail holder, slide the rail into the correct holes. So there are holes here. There's three up front and three towards the back. And so it's holes one, two, three, four, five, six. And depending on the throat size of your machine, you may need to adjust this at your initial setup. So it's defaulted to being in holes three and six. My machine is less than 14 inches, so I actually need to move these to holes one and four. And you just do that with your Allen wrench. Release this screw. There's no nut on the other side, so you can just slide it. And the same for here. Do that on this one as well. Those are adjusted. So we have these adjusted. We'll need our front rail and M4 by 25 screws. There's two of those. Oh, and these securing pins. And remember the front rail is the one that has the brackets already installed on it. So first we're gonna put in the rail holders. So on the rail holders, there's like a shorter plastic piece and a taller one. The taller one goes in the rear. Those go there. And then 
The securing pin goes from the inside out. And then the front screws down. We'll slide over that. And we will insert one of the screws into the empty screw hole from underneath. Okay, that was easy. And now the take up rail, or the, the back rail, it's the last one. Oh, that's handy. So you're going to look through the opening. This one has the screw in it, the left side does not, but you're gonna use that to determine if you need to raise it or not. So you should be able to see clearly over the bed of the machine. So it looks like I need to be at about a four. We're gonna start there and adjust if needed. Okay. And now we're going to take our bar and it looks like it's the same either way. There's a screw hole on both sides. So it doesn't matter which way you insert it. And we're gonna go through the throat of the machine into the other side. So you're going to go through the other hole so that you have room to get into this hole. And then we just tighten it down. I'm actually too high. That's too much space. Let's go down to a three. You should be about a finger's width above the bed of your machine to the rail. All right, and that is it for the assembly. So that took looks like 55 minutes not bad so my first thoughts about this frame versus the original cutie i do like this a lot better i really like the handles and the way they're positioned the assembly was also a lot clearer and a lot faster so that is definitely a plus um, it looks like the take apart is a lot simpler because you can just pull these pins to take the top of the frame off. So that makes it easy for storage. Oh, there's magnets in there. That's really cool. So in the next video, I will load on the test panel and start quilting that. So stick around. Next, we're gonna try quilting a quilt on it. Thanks for watching.